Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering questions from the January 2024 Pure, Math Pure Mathematics P3 International A-Level at Excel exam. And I'm going to go through this whole paper, but I'm going to save the videos as separate videos, one by one for each question, and save them in a playlist. One playlist will be for the paper. The other playlist will be from the topic or for the topic from which this question is taken. And um, that way, at the end, when people are revising, they can look at topic-wise and paper-wise questions easily. Um, now, I'm going to go through the questions with a bit of explanation, which might be, you know, longer than some of you might wish for, but I'm trying to use this as a teaching tool, not just a way of, you know, giving the mark scheme. If you're looking for the mark scheme, you can just download it. Right, so I'm not a talking mark scheme. I am trying to help my students and explaining. And I have particular questions in mind that students have asked me while I'm explaining these questions. So first of all, we have here question number one. It says the point P, negative 4, negative 3, lies on the curve with equation y equals f of x, okay, where x is an element of the real numbers. Okay, we've got to find the point to which P is mapped. Let me just plug in my... Thing, but it doesn't run out of okay one second bear with me there we are okay so the curve with equation y equals f of x is transformed to the curve with equation now first y equals f of 2x so we got to understand about transformations um, of functions okay now this is something where the original function y, y equals f of x the x has been replaced by 2x. Now, this is something which is basically causing um, a change inside the function, inside the function, okay? So what that will cause is a horizontal change. So your original coordinates, p, which is minus 4, minus 3, what's going to change are the, the x coordinates. For the first, for, for this, f of 2x, this is going to affect the x coordinate. Okay, it's going to affect the x-coordinate. It's not going to affect the y-coordinate because it's inside the function. If it was outside the function, it would affect, affect the y-coordinate. Now, how does it affect the x-coordinate? Well, you're multiplying by 2. The 2 is being multiplied by, the x is being multiplied by 2. So the coordinate of x is multiplied by a half. You kind of do the opposite. You multiply by the reciprocal of the number there. So f of ax, okay, causes a stretch factor 1 over a. You multiply the x coordinate by 1 over a. Okay, so what we're going to do is take the minus 4 and we're going to multiply it by 1 over 2. Okay, and this stays the same. The y coordinate is unchanged. So we can say that this is going to give us, therefore, the image of p in this is going to be minus 2 and minus 3. Okay, so you multiply the x coordinate by a half. Okay, so that's going to be the new position for this in part. A. Now for part B, we have a couple of things going on. We have three times f of x minus one. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to deal with these one by one. Okay, so we have to understand about the order of transformations. Okay, for us to to do this, it, it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't make actually a difference whether you do it one way or the other, but we should follow the order because sometimes it does. So the order is we always start with what's inside the function. So we're starting off with p minus 4 minus 3. So here we have the x coordinate, here we have the y coordinate. So the first thing we're going to deal with is what's inside the function. So fx minus 1. I'll put the 3 here, but what we're dealing with first is we're dealing with this part here. Okay, so this is also inside the function, so it's going to affect the x coordinate only. It's going to affect the x-coordinate only and not the y-coordinate. Okay, so this, this part will only affect the x-coordinate. Okay, and what's going to happen to the x-coordinate is it's going to be, yeah, it's like um, it's a transformed, but by a, um, you know, by one unit opposite to this. So it says x minus 1, so you're going to add 1. So this is going to be a translation. This, could, this represents a translation. Okay, of 1, 0. You, it's like when you have a minus 1 here, you add 1. If it's a plus 1 here, you take away 1. You do the opposite. 
So when it's inside, it's like the opposite. So here the, you're going to take the minus 4, you're going to add 1 to it. The y coordinate won't be affected. So this will leave you with minus 4 plus 1, which is minus 3, and then minus 3. Then we have the second part of the transformation, which is 3 fx minus 1. Now we're going to deal with this part here. Now we're going to deal with this part here. Now this is something outside the function. This will affect the y coordinate. Oops, this will affect the y coordinate. It will not affect the exit coordinate. Okay, so this will affect the y coordinate. And this is another stretch like the first question. So this is this is a vertical stretch. Why? Because it's going to affect the y coordinate. Okay, but the stretch factor is going to be, it's, it's going to be the same as normal because outside acts normal. So you're going to take this and you're going to multiply it by three. So your new image, this minus three won't be affected now, but this will be multiplied by three. So your image of P is going to be minus three and minus nine. And there's the answer. Okay, to part B, minus three, minus nine. Okay, so we have to understand about whether it's inside, it's opposite, outside, acts, you know, um, normal. Okay, so here this is, this was, uh, I'll just write it as a stretch. So horizontal stretch, factor one over two. Okay, one over two, the reciprocal of this. Okay, so there's part A and B. Now for part C, it says, y equals the modulus of fx. So what happens when you have a modulus function? What happens is basically anything that's above the x-axis remains as it is. Anything below the x-axis is reflected in the x-axis. So we have this point, which is minus 4, minus 3. Minus 4, minus 3 over here. That's minus 4, minus 4, sorry, minus 3. Okay, minus 4, minus 3. What's going to happen under this transformation? Okay, it's going to be reflected in the x-axis. So it's going to end up over here. So the x-coordinate will not be changed. So this is something that's going to affect only the x-coordinate because it's like the whole function is, in, is inside the modulus sign. So it's like affecting the whole function. So we can say that the, the p minus 4 minus 3, it will be the x-coordinate that is unchanged and the y-coordinate that's going to change. And how is it going to change? It's going to simply change its sign. So the image in this case is going to be minus 4 and 3. This point will just reflect in the x-axis. Okay. If it was above the x-axis, it wouldn't change. If it was 4, 3, for example, or even minus 4, 3, it would stay exactly as it is. It won't change. Anything above the x-axis stays the same. Anything below the x-axis is reflected in the x-axis. That's when it's like this. Okay. So that's how... We can understand what to do there for question part C. So there's the answer for part C. And that concludes question number one. It's all about transformations of functions. Okay, it's an important topic that comes up quite often. Okay, it's a nice, like a gentle start to the paper. Um, anyway, so I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of transformations of functions. Um, uh, you can find in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. And the video that will be linked at the top will show you how to find my index PDF forms, which will help you to navigate through my channel and find things easily. Thank you for watching and see you soon.